and uh, welcome to the second Cisco seminar on AIDS, global health and human rights. And today we have the great pleasure of having Professor Thibault Boulevard with us. Uh, professor Boulevard is assistant professor in art history at the Centre d'Histoire à Sciences Po. And today, in fact, we will tackle the topic of AIDS from a different perspective that it's visual, that of its visual and artistic representations. And we will do this starting from the recent book published by Professor Bouvan, uh, released, if I'm not wrong, in June 2021, entitled La Rancida, uh, 1981 1997, uh, which focuses on visual uh, representation on HIV and AIDS uh, in Europe and in the United States between the 80s and the 90s. Thanks again, Professor Bouvan, and please, the stage is yours. I will say you have about uh, half an hour, 25 minutes for your presentation, and then a Q&A session will, will start, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ilaria. <clears throat> so uh, hello to, to all of you. I'm, I'm very happy to, to be with you today. And uh, thank you uh, to Mario and to all of you for inviting me to speak at this seminar. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here uh, this afternoon. So um, just to, to, to introduce myself first, um, I would like to say that I first did history, then I studied art history. And so Ilaria, as you said, I defended a thesis in contemporary art history at the Sorbonne. And uh, it became a book, Art in AIDS, recently published. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about images, about visual representations. And I would like to focus on what images can add to the history of illness, to the history of AIDS, uh, a history that is currently studied by historians as a total social fact. So in the spirit of this seminar, I would like to make you aware of some of my investigation strategies of my way of building uh, an historical object, uh, the AIDS crisis um, in this case. So in doing so, I want to emphasize the value of a visual history of the AIDS crisis. So to sum up, I would like to unpack my approach as an art historian to a problem and how I try to solve it in a way. Um, that's the cover of the, of the book. So um, I think it, it's always interesting to, to ask about the reasons for our work uh, because they, they often determine the way we work. And in this respect, I like to quote Paul Venn, uh, history as the property of bewilding us, constantly confronting us with strange things that our most natural reaction is not to see. Far from finding out that we have no the right key, we do not even see that there is a lock to open. Let me sit a personal example where that's not very interesting. So as for me, I was bewildered by images. Uh, in this, if this encounter had not taken place, I would have done something completely different, I think, in part because I was not at the very beginning I was not particularly interested in the AIDS crisis. And I can even say that it did not interest me at that time. But here it is. Um, I first encountered the image of the sick body of the writer and photographer Hervé Guibert, who filmed himself shortly before his death from AIDS in 1991. Then I encountered a Black Death by Gilbert and George. The crisis of the contemporary body, the eruption of a plague in the early 80s, these were two issues that deeply disturbed me. Then I gradually realized that these works were not isolated. There are thousands of visual representations of the AIDS crisis, works of art, 
but also products of activism, media images, etc., etc. This was another clear indication for me that there was something going on with these images. To put it another way, um, it very quickly became clear to me that the AIDS crisis had raised issues of representation in the visual field. Um, in, 19, uh, in 1983, the year she died of AIDS, the New York actress and writer Cookie Muller suggested that the event, the AIDS crisis, provoked a need for images and acts of looking. So you can see the, the, um, the, the, the quote here, um, just here. Since then, I um, just have to move, okay. Well, uh, my best friend died of AIDS. Since then, there have been so many uh, more friends I have lost. We all have. Through all this, I have come to realize that the most painful tragedy concerning AIDS death has to do with something much larger than the loss of human life itself. There is a deepening horror more grand than the world is yet aware. To see it, we have to watch closely who is being stolen from us. We have to watch closely who is being stolen from us. Um, but before going any further, let's go back to the context in which these images appeared. Um, of course, uh, you, you know it, but just to remind that in the 80s and 90s, the AIDS crisis was a defining event, of course, in contemporary history, a total social fact. Um, the first cases of AIDS were identified in the United States in 1981, and a generation of women and men had been attacked. The AIDS crisis acted as a litmus test for Western societies, shaking them up. It transformed them in terms of health, politics, society, economics, and culture, in terms of fear, health, knowledge, mobilization, representation, sensitivities, and the relationship with the body and sexuality. All areas of society were affected by the AIDS crisis. And my research focused on the very difficult period uh, of 1981 to uh, 1997, terrible moment of total helpness. And why 1987? Because that year, uh, triple therapy was introduced. And thanks to this drug, the disease was no longer necessarily synonymous with death in the short term. Um, sorry, just I have. Well, um, within this chronological frameworks, I worked with or from a, a multidisciplinary corpus of artistic and visual objects as well as other sources, most notably literature. This corpus, of course, was not exhaustive at all. Uh, I had to make choices, of course. I had to select, I had to classify. Um, in a way, I had to let go uh, of the idea of trying to say everything. <laughs> um, so I selected visual representations that seemed to me to express better than others the main issues of representation raised by the epidemic crisis. For instance, here, um, you are the first known artistic representation of the disease by Isaac Pekin. In the summer of 1981, so at the very beginning of the crisis, Pekin Went to, a clinic, uh, went to a clinic in the S village of New York. There he met two men who had marks on their skin. It was a Kaposi sarcoma, of course. His doctor did not seem concerned at all, but he went back to the studio and made this work to express his anguish. He didn't know anything then. He didn't read anything at that time. The first articles uh, on AIDS were published shortly afterwards, not before. 
So in the book, I focused on um, the United States and on the European countries most affected by the epidemic, France, Germany, England. Um, I would uh, I had to justify of course the choice, uh, but briefly, I would say that this focus um, allowed me to study a generation of women and men who had a lot in common in the political, social, economic, moral, artistic, and cultural context that brought them together. However, in the context of the neoliberal and conservative revolution led by Reagan in the United States, this crisis was particularly catastrophic in the United States. A majority of people living with AIDS had no access to an effective social system of social protection and health insurance. So in US, activism and artistic forms were therefore very virulent. During the period in that context, images were able to embody the epidemic event. That's my thesis. Uh, they represented everything that was at stake. They assumed, images assumed a kind of responsibility. They played a nation's role, relying on their ability to grasp the issues at stake in the event and to shape it. From this point of view, I think history can be written from there also. I would like to very quickly present you with some main ideas. Um, at a time when Francis Fukuyama and many others, as you know, were talking about the end of history, heads has had become for a generation an observation of the end in a much more obvious way. The images bear witness to this. In this context, artists had to reinvent the image of the disaster. They went back in time, uh, for example, to find the figure of the plague. It was a way for, uh, it was a way of giving form to their anxiety in the present. It was also a way of expressing this reversal of history. Um, but also, in order to talk about AIDS and express it, their anxiety, artists also talked about something else, or the discomfort of the time, the ecological crisis, or the nuclear danger, for example. To speak of AIDS, to, to use them, this kind of images, for example, the nuclear uh, danger of the ecological crisis was a way to speak of AIDS. That's very interesting. And that's a, 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 a very important point uh, as far as images are concerned. Um, it, it, um, I was, of course, interested in visual representations of the body during the crisis, um, during that period. Uh, illness, in a way, overturned the dream body of the 80s. It thwarted the dreams of youth, of good health. It proved that modern science had not conquered disease. So there are many, 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 as you can guess, images of sick bodies attacked by AIDS. Um, the visual representations express the ravages of the disease. And they also be a witness to its terrible social and moral consequences. So we, we must remember that the 80s and 90s, through AIDS, reinvented new political figures made dangerous for the equilibrium and immunity of the social body. The sick, gay and lesbians, prostitutes, drug addicts, immigrants, Africans, Americans, Hispanics, etc., etc. So the 80s and 90s 
creates reinvented forms of fear, of detestation, prohibition, and exclusion of the sick body, especially homosexual, considered as an incubator of the plague. And we can find uh, this story in the images. Um, the images express the extreme weakness of the anatomical body, and at the same time, its resistance in a context of identity struggles. So you can find sick bodies. Um, uh, you can find this kind of images so a kind of representation of the extreme weakness of the anatomical body, but also you can find a um, body who resisted in a context of identity struggles. Um, here you have um, a represent some representations of, for example, the, the, the ghost, uh, kind of ghost bodies, and of uh, the impossibility about the impossibility of sexuality at the time of AIDS, for example. You can hear just uh, look at the Kissering uh, mural once upon a time in 1981, uh, 19, sorry, uh, 1999. Uh, so um, one day, some, some, someone asked um, Kissering and uh, asked him, why did you do this mural? And Erin said, answered, um, it was once upon a time, we, 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 we did that once upon a time, but not now. Um, so the images express the extreme weakness, as I told you, of the anatomical body, and at the same time, so uh, its resistance. I think images allow us to account for bodies in illness. They have played a role in keeping the body of uh, of keeping the body in the realm of sexuality and desire, affection, care, and love. That's also a very important point, I think. Um, another point, a third point: um, the images allow us to consider the X crisis from the point of view of this extraordinary violence. Um, the images suggest that this violence is part of the violence of the times. The figure of the ruin is thus very present. It refers to the collapse of history. Don Giorno, an artist and an activist, suggested this in literature. I have seen, I quote Don Giorno, I have seen the best minds of my generation die horrible deaths from AIDS. So in this stillmate, uh, in order to escape it, to escape the situation, uh, artists confirmed the cathartic function of art. For example, Nikit Saint-Fal shoot against AIDS and Jean-Marie Le Pen uh, in France. So you can see here uh, le tir, sida et sida, uh, of Nikit saint uh, A lot of artists dreamed of killing, of destroying. So I want to say, what I want to say, that reality, reality was reinvented at that time through representations. It allowed them to temporarily abstain from the social game or need to return to it subsequently. Um, at that time, also, that's some images about the, 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 the way artists rain, um, used representation to, 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 to express and to say their uh, need also, for example, to kill. Uh, I want to kill, I want to express my violence, for example. And um, the images tell us that the violence of the AIDS crisis was, at that time, closely linked also to the violence of the predatory economy at that time, uh, under Reagan and Bush, especially in the uh, United States. Um, 
also a very interesting point um, is, for example, uh, I will send you, of course, the PowerPoint, but um, a very interesting point is the way also um, in the United States, artists and activists linked in the visual representations of AIDS linked the violence of the AIDS crisis to the violence and of all contemporary wars in Central and South America, in Vietnam, in Kuwait, for example. So they used uh, wars to express uh, the situation of the AIDS crisis. In their eyes, AIDS was a war. It was also to suggest, especially in United States, that US criminal foreign policy found a parallel in catastrophic domestic and health policy. It was a way to draw a parallel between um, this um, uh, the AIDS crisis and the foreign policy. That's a very important point, I think, uh, as far as images are concerned. And a very, very disturbing also uh, aspect is this one. Um, in this context of violence, of catastrophe, of destruction, some artists and activists went back in time to the Second World War and the Holocaust also. The difficult parallel, because it's, of course, a difficult parallel, but the difficult parallel was first developed in the United States, then in Europe, first in the United States, then in Europe, notably in France, but it was soon abandoned for obvious reasons. Um, this is a very complex affair, but to sum up briefly, it was mainly a matter of finger pointing and finger wagging. For some, the inaction of governments was an intentional policy to destroy the marginal populations affected by AIDS. So some activists, for example, drew the parallel between the situations, but it's a very complex affair. Um, the images also um, allow us to grasp in the context of the 80s and 90s during the AIDS crisis, the bonds of solidarity between people. It is very interesting because these images, which are very, very numerous, appear precisely at a time when the neoliberal revolution is promoting individualism. Remembering that um, in the 80s, Margaret Thatcher in United Kingdom said, who is society? There is no such thing. There are individual men and women, and there are families, and no government can do anything except to people, and people look to themselves first. So it's very interesting to look at these images and to understand the mobilization and the spirit of solidarity through images. These images, this visual representation, allow us to understand how artists inventing, invented new rituals of mourning, forms of cohabitation with the sick, between the living and the dead. Um, images could be places where beings could be protected where interrupted existences could be continued in a way. Um, as you can see, so as you can understand, um, I write history from images, obviously. Um, and I consider these images to be observatories of events, effective indicators of it. But I would still like to insist on the way I proceed. And on this point, I would first say that I base my practice on a rejection of internalism. I practice an, in, an anthropology of representations that includes 
political history, intellectual and societal history, the history of emotions, etc., etc. So I develop a political conception of visual and artistic forms. What I mean is, uh, what I mean is that our theory alone is not enough uh, to, 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 to understand the yes, crisis through images. Um, from a certain point of view, I have no choice. The AIDS crisis and therefore its history are at, the interest, are at the intersection of many issues in the human and social sciences. So I'm particularly interested in the crossing of disciplines when it allows us to be nourished by everything that can be useful to us, when it allows us to feed our friends and to multiply our objects of study. Um, trying to think about images for what they are, for what they can be in the context of the AIDS crisis also requires, I think, some specific strategies I try to develop. Um, to put it very briefly, I would say that I work essentially on building up a corpus of visual representations around 13 issues, the body, the violence, the solidarity, the spirit of catastrophe. And uh, I try to put images in relation with each other. And I think this often opens up new perspectives on historical narrative. So as far as my research on the AIDS crisis is concerned, um, the fact of bringing together American and European artists and activists makes possible to alternate the problematization of objects and the constitution of poles of images to analyze them as I already told you, the figures of the catastrophe, the bodies, activism, solidarity, rituals of mourning, memory, censorship, the states of violence of society, for instance. Um, to give an example, uh, I have brought together here Cindy Sherman, disaster, Cindy Sherman's disasters and Derek Jarman's black paintings to enter into a shared history of the violence of the epidemic crisis under Reagan and Thatcher. Sherman is American, German is, Bri uh, German is British. They didn't know each other, but they produced very similar works at that time, uh, disasters, black paintings. And, and I tried to understand their works through um, uh, the idea of violence, because Sherman and German uh, in United States and in United Kingdom, I think, expressed um, this idea through their works at the same time, but they didn't need each other. Um, comparing artistic works and other visual objects from medical diagrams, to activist productions, putting them together, this uh, visual representation, putting them in tension in a way, one with the other, one against the other, lengthens the historian's questionnaire and I think shifts the focus. I give you just one example. Um, putting intention, the cultural activism, what I mean by um, cultural activism is public actions, flyers, posters, banners, um, which dominates the visual history of the AIDS crisis, putting intention this cultural activism and all the visual creation that is not activism, allow us to better see the later, sometimes underestimated, criticized in the name of a persistent aesthetic appreciation and a demand for immediate effectiveness. You know, um, you have to make 
everything more complex, of course, when we make history. So we must, for example, look together at the shoot by Nikit Saint-Fal, a gesture of inner resistance executed in the secrecy of her garden in Swazi, and this target by Donald Moffat, uh, which is a public activist form. The logic of action of these two images is not the same, but they have much to say to each other and to us. In a way, they turn around each other. And when I told Donald Moffat, for example, when I told him in the book, I want to make a parallel with your work, uh, with your poster, it kills me. And uh, this work on Nikit Saint-Fal, he told me, oh, that's a great idea. I didn't know uh, Nikit Saint-Fal, but it's incredible. She did the same thing than us. So that was very interesting for me, uh, in a way. Um, it's not a question of creating simple equivalences, but the idea is to link images together, to confront them, and to create meaning in the confrontation. Um, the dialogue also um, between artistic works and other visual objects permits us to question the category of the masterpiece, uh, to question the category of the major and the minor in art, of the legitimate and the illegitimate, of the techniques and of the politic of representation. Um, putting artworks in tension with other types of visual objects is a way of observing the birth and diffusion of systems of representations, ruptures, turning points in history. From, for example, from that advertisement at the very beginning of the 80s, which gives form to the heroic body of the decade in Times Square in New York. To this piece here of body in Robert Gober's work, there is a paradigm shift. That's why for me, the, to draw a parallel between these two representation was interesting. Um, another point very important for me uh, is in this one, the artist, we have to know that the artist do not always respect the history of events, but rather go behind them. The works can thus say something other than the historical truth, sheds new light on it. For instance, artists, as I've told you, go back in time to find the plague and give aid its shape, its figure. That's a very interesting point to see, for example, in the 80s and 19th, the ghost of plague uh, that's a very, very interesting point. Images can mislead us. To make use of images, to make them speak, we must first understand that they are rarely simple, simple testimonies, like simple reflections of history, like illustrations, but they are historical phenomena that have their own regime of intelligibility and their explanatory force. This is how we can study them as sources. Um, finally, I would like to insist uh, on the fact that as far as the AIDS crisis is concerned, the study of visual and artistic forms opens up the possibility, I think, uh, of a comprehensive and interpretative history which alternates between the collective, the generation, the group, and individual experience. A history that is particularly attentive, therefore, to its actors in the construction of the social. When we look, for example, at La Pudeur ou l'Impudeur, when we look at the cookie portfolio by Nan Goldin, when we look at the bath scene here by Hugh Steers, or when we look at this suicide scene by Luis Cruz Assaceta, we make ourselves contemporaries 
of an event that requires us to consider its representation as an experience. A mobilization of uh, an intimacy and a series of effects. The images um, where we find the expression of both the conscious and the unconscious, the symbolic expression of the reverse side of real life, offer to reach, I think, the very age of history. Uh, the images offer to enter into a live experience to grasp statements, practices, sensitivities, emotions, reasons of uh, reasons for acting, a subjectivity. It allows us to track down the involuntary, the non-conscious, the informal, the repressed, the silence, and the shadow. And from this point of view, the images does not the image sorry does not only make it possible to speak about the person who makes it and the person it evokes but to speak from them and with them visual history can therefore be seen as a social science of experience sorry i have been a little bit long but I, I, I apologize. Thank you very much, Thibault, um, for this very rich and fascinating presentation. So it's time for questions. And we are a very small group today, but nonetheless, I hope we can be. <laughs> um, OK, maybe I can break the ice if there is anyone else you can yeah. use the chat or raise your hand as usual uh, mario? mario okay yes okay. no i just didn't want to go, go first but just sure, to, sure. Uh, thanks Thibaut. that's uh, super fascinating um i have many questions uh, i assume most of them very naive uh, uh so a uh, uh, preemptive I mean, you know, apologizing in advance is not a very good marketing strategy, but I apologize in advance for how naive, I guess, my questions will be. The first one is, I mean, looking at your images and listening to you, it seems to be a very urban, metropolitan urban story, right? And so I was wondering if you have reflected on that, even because the urban environment, especially the American, but not just the American urban environment, is just, you know, the perfect space for that kind of dystopian, apocalyptic representations, which were so strong in the 80s. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry about this very, very bad cultural reference, which is John Carpenter's movie, Escape from New York, which was made in 1981 and it was based, situated in 1997, which is the same, this, the very same periodization you, for obvious, uh, well, it's the very AIDS, HIV periodization we rely, we, we rely on. So in 1981, John Carpenter made a very dystopian urban mo movie, which has the same HIV periodization. That, that struck me uh, a lot. And the follow up to, to, to this question is how has art evolved alongside the evolution of the epidemic? That's very impressionistic. Again, it must be, but my impression is that in the 1990s, the images you were presenting become more colorful. The, the darkness of the 1980s is less visible. That's, so have you interrogated the historical change via the artistic change you uh, uh, engage with? Those are just, you know, I have many others, but I don't want to monopolize the discussion. Those are just, you know, some very naive comments, as I say, that I, on which I'd like your, you know, your, uh, your response, your reaction. No, no, thank, thank, 
thank, thank you very much, Mario. It's not naive at all. Uh, your questions are not naive at all. Um, uh, a lot of things to, to say. Um, so I just I, I just want to, to begin with Carpenter because you are right. And um, you know, uh, of course, I didn't uh, I didn't um, uh, tell you about that, but uh, you can find a lot of uh, references to the AIDS crisis in the movies at that time. Uh, you can think about uh, David Cronenberg, for example, The Fly. Uh, it's uh, it's very interesting from that point of view. Um, or um, uh, It by Stephen King uh, at the very beginning of the of the novel and uh, after the film, you have a direct reference to AIDS. Uh, for instance, a very violent scene, uh, the death of an homosexual in a very tiny tone um, in the United States, and it's very, very uh, violent. It's very violent. Well, so that's just to, to, to say something about um, the, the, the horror uh, scene, in a way. Um, you're right. It's, um, in a way, I would say that it's, it's an urban and uh, it's an urban history. Uh, I show you, uh, I show you um, a lot of visual representations, a, a very, very, an excerpt of my research, of course. Uh, I have thousands and thousands of images, but uh, these images were made, produced, showed, and um, were exhibited, sorry, uh, in a urban context. Uh, that you are right. It was, I would say that it was difficult uh, in the 80s, even for a famous artist to speak about AIDS. It was difficult to exhibit the works. It was difficult to do something about AIDS. So um, even in New York City, for example. So it's a urban history because um, in a way, uh, as far as visual representations are concerned, because images needed to be shown, to be exhibited, to be produced, and it was much more easier to do these images uh, in a urban context. Well, so that's maybe some, uh, it's, a, it's a way to, to answer your, your, your question. Uh, you can also uh, notice that it's uh, um, as images are um, pro uh, were produced, exhibited, etc., in big towns: New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, etc., etc. So, uh, of course, at the time, for example, act up at the end of the 80s, act up that that uh, New York was the capital. AIDS. Uh, so, you know, it's related also to uh, these big cities. And as far as the evolution of art is concerned, um, a lot of people always uh, asked me, ask me if there is something like uh, AIDS art. It's, you know, uh, if there is an AIDS art, an art du sida. Um, it's a very complex question. Um, I don't want to, to say that. I, I don't like to say it's an AIDS art because you have very, very, very different uh, form of art, of visual representations. You have uh, a lot of uh, different forms um, from very different artists and activists. You have conceptual art, body art, um, painting, sculpture, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's it's quite difficult to say there is just one AIDS art. You have artists, you have activists interested at that time by AIDS, and they wanted to say something. They wanted to express something. But they, I, I didn't met, for example, an artist to say I'm an AIDS artist. For example, you, you it's you you, you can you it's 
So I think it's quite impossible to say, uh, to say that. Um, as far as the evolution is concerned, um, of course, uh, at the very beginning of the, cri of the crisis, you have a lot of representations of bodies, of death, of anger, of violence, and little by little, at the end of the 90s, you have a lot of works, um, a lot of artists interested in memory. Uh, for example, um, when, three um, when the new therapies are, um, um, were, were developed. So you, you, can, you, you can find a, a kind of chronological frame in that way. But it's quite difficult to, to, to answer um, very precisely because um, you can find works related to memory uh, at the very beginning of the ages. Um, you can find um, very colorful works at the very beginning of that time and very dark works at the end of the 90s. So it depends, it depends, sorry, uh, of the artist. It depends of, its situ of his situation, of his life, of his history. So you can find very, very different forms, very, very different images um, during this period. And there is, in a way, I would like to say there is not a, a, a logical, um, um, continuum. There is no, uh, well, anger and uh, death at the beginning and memory at the end. Everything is very, very, um, um, I lost my word, um, uh, melee, melee. Uh, uh, um, mixed. 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 Wow. Larry, can I just have a small follow up? Just then, sure, then sure. I shut up. It's it's kind of a deja vu because Thibault and I we had this exchange before during his job talk, and I posed my my question very poorly. He was in full panic mood, so the the discussion stopped immediately. <laughs> my my question is about it's linked to what you were saying, and you know, AIDS becomes almost mainstream. That's the term I used in yeah, yeah. our previous conversation. Mm -hmm. And in 1993, you can have a blockbuster movie like Philadelphia, right? Yeah. And yeah. then, and, and there is a kind of normalization of AIDS, even because, you know, people like Magic Johnson uh, uh, gets it. So it's kind of normalized in a way. So the question I was trying to pose and I wasn't able to pose uh, in the in this weird exchange we had, I remember, I remember you, you <laughs> during your job talk. Is I mean, it's linked to what you I, I asked before. I mean, what happens? I mean, to this kind of art. I mean, you say you know, anger, despair, reaction, rage. When something becomes in a way mainstream, uh, how? Uh, uh that, that's, that, that's, very, that's very that's interesting, very interesting Mario, because um, I, I understand that you, 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 were, you, you are right. I was quite panicked at that time. So, <laughs> so it's <laughs> sorry, but uh, no, no. Um, it was uh, my fault. I created, you know, the worst possible atmosphere no, no, for no, a no, job no, talk. No, no, I don't, I, 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 I don't forget your, your question. question. And it was, and it is a very good question. Um, um, what can I say? Um, you're right. Uh, there is a kind of normalization of the AIDS of the of the of the AIDS crisis. I, I, the term normalization is maybe quite um, ambiguous and quite difficult to use, but there is something uh, with uh, Magic Johnson, with Rockettson at the middle of the eighties with also a terrible um, affair in, um, um, it was about a little boy um, who was um, HIV positive and died 
um, in an, uh, at the, in the middle of the 80s. So, well, the the public opinion uh, knew the situation, and you're right. There is a kind of um, something happened at that time. Um, it was no more a secret. In a way, it was no more. Um, um, it was no more um, uh, hidden, in a way, uh, in some part of the society. Uh, but as far as visual representations are concerned, uh, until the end of the 90s, it was still quite very difficult to exhibit visual representations. You, you can, for example, just to, to give you an example, um, I just know one example of an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, so big, big institution. Uh, it was uh, in uh, 81, uh, 89, sorry. Uh, it was an exhibition of Nicholas Nixon uh, photography um, about AIDS, but uh, it was, Nixon was very famous at the time, and it was very difficult to uh, exhibit, to show images, and a very few institutions, for example, uh, wanted and accepted to show these representations, because to speak about AIDS, to speak of AIDS, was to speak, of course, of sexuality, homosexuality, um, was uh, a way to speak about um, anger uh, or uh, violence. So it was quite difficult for an institution, a public institution, to accept this kind of representations. And artists, when I did some interviews, Artists and very famous artists at the time told me that it was quite difficult. It was a risk for them until the 90s to say, okay, to, to say to your dealer, uh, to, to your, um, um, for example, you, you are in gallery or something, and to say, okay, I want to do something and I want to, to show something about AIDS. It was very difficult. Uh, even someone like Jeff Koons had a lot of problems when he did Made in Heaven at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, and uh, he was blacklisted uh, during uh, some years because he did this work about sexuality with his wife at the time, and it was also a work about AIDS, but it was a huge scandal. So you're right, but as far as images are concerned, it was difficult until the end of the 90s to show images in public institutions, in public cultural and artistic institutions. If, well. No, thanks a lot. Thanks, may I? Uh, okay, so. Um, my first questions are extremely naive, so my <laughs> apologies, um, Thibault. Um, can you give us an idea of the extent of the artist's involvement? Uh, how vast, how large was this visual production you told us about? But, but, but above all, uh, is this involvement comparable to that experienced by artists in the face of other previous diseases, or this is the first time in a way? This is my first question, maybe afterwards. I will. Ah, can, can I answer you right now? It's, it's, it's a very, very interesting and thank you Lai, also for the question, because uh, now I'm um, I'm quite exhausted to speak about AIDS. <laughs> so um, I have a new field I want to explore in the Spanish flu. And I want to work on the Spanish flu, but there is nothing, no artistic images, nothing, 
nada, yet. <laughs> you have nothing, almost nothing. I think I have 10 visual artistic representations. You have a lot of photographies, you have a lot of um, uh, um, drawings for the press, extra, but no artistic images. Uh, as far as the S crisis is concerned, you have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of representations. Uh, I can't give you a number of visual representations because it's, it's quite impossible. When I first began to, to work, uh, it was phew, 10 years ago now, <laughs> quite 10 years ago, um, I was, I, at the beginning, I said, okay, I, I can't do that. It's too big. It's, uh, it's impossible. But well, as I told you, uh, um, I made choices. I, I had to, to select and well, that's the work of, you know, of course, uh, that's uh, our work. Uh, but um, there is a lot, lot, lot of images and it's the first time in history, I would say. You have, of course, one of the big events in history is the play, of course, you have the play, but uh, as far as the artistic field is concerned, uh, and I just speak about the artistic field here, um, you don't have a lot of visual representation of play. You have something quite different. You have a way to represent the event. You have a way, for example, you have a very good book about that. It's Near Mice, The Plague in Florence and in Sienne. Um, it's a very, very interesting book in, uh, not so by Near Mice. Uh, it was in 1951, I think, the book. And um, Near Mice was an art historian and he explained that, um, it's quite difficult to, to, to find explicit, uh, direct representations of play. Um, the representations are more um, a story of perspectives of, um, um, sorry, the, of um, la taille, uh, um, uh, the, size. The size, sorry. Thank, Thank you, Mario. The size, the size, the size, for example, of a character in a painting. You have a, a little, a little uh, man, for example, and a very huge uh, figure of um, Marie, etc., etc. So it was a, a way to represent the event. And you have a lot of representations of disease in history and at the, in the. Uh, at the beginning of, uh, at the end of um, the, uh, for example, uh, as far as um, tuberculosis is concerned, or you have representations. But for the AIDS crisis, you have an explosion. You have a, uh, something uh, quite unbelievable and quite new. Uh, it's the first time, I think, in history, we have so much representations. So it's. Um... Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone else? Marco, please. Yeah, ask a question too, please. So, first of all, thank you, Thibault. It was very, very fascinating. Very, very interesting. Uh, I have two very uh, banal questions. It's, they're not naive. They're, still banal. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, you put together uh, activists and artists. Yeah. I would like to know something more about the possibility to distinguish these two groups. So how these artists who are not involved in the crisis directly, they were not, they have no HIV, et cetera, cope with this kind of, of problem, of issue, and how the activists, if they have a specific way to, to cope with it. And the second one is a very, I, you didn't study that. I read your book, your wonderful book, but I am very curious about what happened in the 
other part of the world. In, for example, in the Russian bloc, in Soviet bloc. Of course, you didn't study it, but if you get some information and give yeah. us some information about that, because it would be very interesting to understand if and to what extent uh, these two words um, had contacts on this topic, especially after 1991, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Marco, for your uh, questions. Um, I, I can begin with the, the last one. Um, you know, uh, for the the Russian uh, for, for Russia, um, for the the, the government uh, at that time, uh, ads didn't exist, <laughs> or it was, a, of course, a capitalist uh, disease. Um, so you can find very interesting and very funny, in a way, uh, drawings or uh, caricatures uh, about uh, this way to understand disease. But of course, uh, to be more serious, of course, um, AIDS uh, made um, uh, was a, a, also a, a catastrophe in that part of that world of the world. And um, I, yeah, there were some links, um, especially between activists and, um, for example, American activists and um, activists um, in the east of Europe. Um, one of the first big exhibition uh, organized in Europe about AIDS was organized in Berlin, uh, West Berlin, well, but near, <laughs> near East Berlin. It was an exhibition by Frank Wagner. And Frank Wagner was um, a curator a, um, a, a curator, uh, and uh, he did an exhibition. Uh, it was um, an exhibition um, made by Act Up uh, New York, and Frank Wagner did the same uh, in Berlin um, in uh, at the end uh, in 1989. Uh, it was a very powerful exhibition uh, with images of the Nuremberg trial. Uh, it was quite um, violent uh, as far as images were concerned. And uh, that's just uh, an example. But as far as the Eastern Bloc is concerned, uh, I have, for example, uh, I have one example um, of a very small group in Poland uh, it was a very uh, small homosexual group of men, and they did something. <laughs> they did something in their apartments. Um, it was very secret. It was between, they were, I think it's a, it was a group of 10 people, I think, something like that. And I found, uh, I found, um, drawings, images, uh, and the inspiration of their works was, for example, American um, comics, uh, Donald Duck, uh, Mickey, for example. And they used the figures of Mickey or Donald Duck to speak about AIDS. So that's quite interesting. And I think they were some links. Uh, activists, of course they were links. Activists, American activists went to Europe, went to Germany, especially to Germany, um, and to teach, in a way, to teach uh, activists, European activists. So, uh, and you have some magazines, some, uh, um, some um, newspapers, etc., etc. So, you can find uh, something in that uh, context. Um, and 
the other question, uh, as far as uh, the difference between uh, artists and activists, yes, I wanted to, to, to bring them together in a way, uh, because I felt at the very beginning of my work, I felt that in a way when we are, when you are interested in visual representations, the first thing to appear is activist representations. Uh, activist visual representations, like the triangle, the pink triangle of active, for example. And um, I wanted to, to bring them together. But of course, I can, I try to make parallel between this representation. But sometimes, of course, um, I wanted also to insist on their differences. On, uh, for example, an artist in France, Jean-Michel Autoniel, told me, but you know, we didn't, we, French artists, we didn't, um, we didn't do uh, artist, uh, artistic representations or visual representations for the streets. Uh, it was a different way to do, it was for us, it was. So there is a very different way of doing something. Um, some artists were activists. Some artists, like Kisserin, some artists were not activists. Um, some activists were artists, and some uh, activists were not at all. In France, if you if you you take the example of France, in France uh, we didn't knew uh, a, a huge, a very um, um, important cultural activism because artists uh, didn't do anything in a way for um, active, so didn't participate to to active. Uh, so the the relations between activism and artistic field was very strong in a way in the United States. And on the other way, there is a lot of differences. There is a lot of differences um, of um, logic of actions also. Um, and you can find examples of an artist who did something for an act of action like Kisarin a flyer, a poster, or something. And after, at the end of the day, he came to the studio and did his self-portrait with big red marks uh, to, 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 to express his Kaposi Sarcoma. So we can find very, very interesting, complex logic of actions. So just to, to finish with this, it's. What I want to say that I want to draw, I wanted to, to make parallels, to justify, of course, these parallels, but also to, to keep um, this logic of actions. And of course, I don't want to systematize, to, to make a, a kind of system. Uh, I want to draw parallel and no, no, it's an affair of context. Uh, I want to, to be very careful with this. Uh, um, comparisons. I didn't know if I, I answered properly. You did. Thank you. Thank you. And we we have a raised hand from Stefano Kessa. So please. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Thibault, for the fascinating presentation. Uh, I have. I I want to join the group uh, asking uh, maybe um, uh, naive questions. But uh, I have a question about the unintended consequences, uh, uh, about the limits, maybe, of this uh, artistic movement you have presented. Um, I was wondering whether, um, talking about how the public opinion uh, perceived this um, uh, uh, piece of art that you presented, um, whether this movement um in a certain sense strengthen uh, some stereotypes uh, related to the um to the disease 
Um, yes. Yeah, this is the question. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Stefano. It's, it's very, it's not naive at all. It's a very interesting question. And just to answer it, um, I, I remember the first time I, um, I did something uh, in public. Uh, I was obviously younger. <laughs> and uh, I did something about um, the parallel uh, between AIDS and play in visual representations. And someone, uh, I think it was um, an anthropologist, told me, oh, but it's very, it's very, I, um, I have a lot of problem with these images because I think uh, they are telling me or telling us that uh, it's the same thing, AIDS and play, for example. And I told him, no, no, it's, we, we have to be very careful um, for example, um, they didn't want to straighten, of course, the, the, the public discourse uh, about the parallel between AIDS and uh, the plague. Um, to, to, to speak about plague, to, to, to do something about plague, was a way to express a kind of anger, a, a kind of anguish, a kind of fear, um, the catastrophe at that time and to find images capable to express this um, catastrophe. So um, just this is an example of, of course, maybe the limits of images. And um, we, we have to think also that these artistic images were were exhibited in institutional and cultural, for example, um, uh, institutions sometimes. Um, very few people uh, could see these images in a way. Uh, so um, the access to these images was not so easy uh, for the public opinion. And when these images were shown, were exhibited, uh, sometimes um, uh, they had an impact. Um, each time images of AIDS, visual representations of AIDS were exhibited in museums, for example, or in galleries in New York or in France or in, or in United States or in, sorry, in United Kingdom, they were scandals. They were um, uh, political interventions. Um, so um, that's very interesting because it helps us to understand the power of these images at that time, the public reaction, the political reaction of the, to this, um, these exhibitions. So um, just to finish, um, very interesting questions, a, a, a very interesting question. Um, about the limits also, I just want to add something and it's quite, I don't know, a, a romantic view or something, but some works at that time, produced at that time, were made in secret, were never shown, never exhibited. When Michel Barcelo, a French artist, did 30 portraits of his friend, Hervé Guibert, he didn't want to show them, never. But that's the limit, in a way, of the image. Uh, that limit uh, of image, it's an image for oneself, for it was for him and for his friend, Hervé Guibert. But these images, these portraits of Hervé Guibert still exist, are in Paris, near my home, uh, and uh, in the studio of the, of the artist. And now he wants, he wants, he wants, sorry, he wants to, to show them. And now we can construct, we can write history 
of the AIDS crisis, uh, thanks to these images, very old, Im quite old images, um, and they are powerful now to tell the story for a, a younger generation. And that's very interesting. In Sciences Po, as I told Mario, I think, I have a lot, a lot of uh, young students. And uh, I did a, a lesson about AIDS um, and visual representations. And all of them told me that they didn't knew this story of the 80s and 90s. So they were here because they are here because they they have seen some movies and and I quite I think it's quite very interesting and moving to think that images were produced in the 80s and 90s, sometimes never shown, never exhibited, but they can be seen now and they can be exhibited now for them, for them. And in a way they were artists did this visual representations for us now, for them, in a way. So that's um, a, maybe a way to, to, to think about the limits of images to take a, another way <laughs> and to, yes. Th thank you. There is another question from Antonio. Sama, please. Yes, thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Thibault, because uh, uh, the combination of the art, the artistic representation and the visual representation gave clearly the feeling of the time. Uh, uh, I remember the, those times. So the, the heaviness, the, the anger, the, the fear of AIDS. And uh, we shouldn't forget that uh, a, a group, communities, in the urban uh, North America were criminalized uh, because they were the spreader of the modern plague. But there is something I would like to pay attention to something you, you hinted in your, in your presentation. Uh, when you spoke of the um, visual representation of the activists, you sometimes referred to iconographic model of the past. Mm -hmm. You refer to the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if in your analysis of the Arctic, and you're right, uh, and it's, it's paradoxical that the word pandemic was created for AIDS, but when we talk of COVID, everybody referred to the Spanish influenza. Everybody forget that pandemic, the word by the WHO was created for AIDS because it's still sort of taboo uh, mm -hmm. around you. Know, but the, the, the thing I, I'm intrigued in, the iconographic repetition, both in the artistic representation and the activist visual representation of framework of the past. Yeah. If, uh, if you found that to start with, the representation can only be the reproduction, the reproduction of something already available and then developed in something else. That struck me as, uh, so anyway, thank you very much. And thank you very much for inviting us, me. It's, Thank you very much, Antonio, because uh, you're right. And um, that's why I wanted to, to stress uh, on that point, because it's very interesting the way uh, artists went back on the past um, to, find, to find models or to find um, inspirations. And um, uh, they needed activists and artists needed something available in a way. And we, we, we have to, to think about, for example, um, as far as the United States are concerned, uh, artists uh, and activists uh, were very concerned by, um, of course, the memory of the Vietnam War, for example. And yes, they find in the Vietnam War, some representations, some um, stories, uh, and a kind of material, a kind of um, models to, to say um, the catastrophe. Uh, just, I, 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 won't, I, 
I have a very good example, I think, uh, about that. Um, the blood hand of ACT UP. Um, I remember I was in New York and I told uh, Frank, um, I, I, I don't remember his name, but never mind. It's, um, I told him it was a very um, powerful activist uh, in the 80s. And I told him that um, for the blue hand, uh, did you have any model? Did you have any? Oh, he said, oh, no, but he was not sure. And I showed him uh, the white end of, I don't know, I don't know how to say in English, um, in, South, uh, in, South, uh, in Central and South uh, uh, America, uh, Les Escadrons de la Mort, uh, les, les Escadrons en, en Français, um, par, par, Death, death squad. Death, death squad. squad. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, Mario. Mario. Yeah. And um, it, it, and suddenly it told me, wow. Of course, we 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 knew these images, and it was maybe unconscious. It was, but we knew these images, and that's very interesting because some models were very conscious. It, it was a, a very conscious way to work. But sometimes there was some material, kind of unconscious material, but it was a direct uh, way to, to borrow, in a way, the white end and just to change the color and to put the blue end in the streets of New York. So it's, it's very interesting to see. You have the, the Vietnam War, uh, you have the uh, special operations, and uh, you have the wars in uh, Central and uh, South America. Uh, you are the Kuwait War also, um, and the Second World War. Well, that's a complex affair. So um, you have a lot of models, um, but yes, conscious and unconscious models. OK. So if there are no other questions, I'd like I'd to like think, uh, No, there is one by... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your kind uh, and quite interesting. It's a, it's a very interesting, informative uh, presentation. Uh, my question is, after the crisis or spread of the disease, is there any visual awareness or campaign um, at that time specifically, um, and if yes, then what kind of images um, initially made to control or to spread the awareness uh, publicly? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear very well. I'm sorry. Um, my question is, uh, after the spread the crisis or disease, is there any visual awareness campaign that specifically made for that time? And if yes, then what kind of images initially made for uh, to control the disease? Um, you mean um, uh, campaign um, of prevention, for example, or? Virtually uh, awareness campaigns. Um, I don't know to, to I, I'm not sure to, 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 to understand very well the question, I'm sorry. If, if I may, uh, I'm, I'm, Tahani, I'll get in. If I, for how I understood it, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. You're asking whether there was an artistic expression used at the serving of the service of an awareness campaign to, oh, to oh, make yes, people yes, aware yes, yes. So, to okay. somehow, you know, it's a, create okay. a yeah. greater you sensitivity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear very well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think I, I'm quite uh, tired. <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, um, you have, <laughs> you have uh, at the beginning of the crisis, you have um, some activists and um, 
governmental uh, campaign of prevention using very old images, like old paintings of the um, modern period, for example. You have campaign, very bad campaign of prevention with a skeleton, with um, the, um, the, the reaper, etc., etc. It was quite bad <laughs> campaign, but campaign, campaign, uh, a, a campaign of prevention using a work of art. Now you can find something nowadays, but at the time, um, works of art were quite confidential. So uh, it was difficult to use for, um, to be clear, it was difficult to use images. I have maybe one example, but it's not a work of art um, in a way. Well, we can discuss it, but it was a campaign of Benetton. So, <laughs> you know, I think I see all Italians here. Uh, it, was a, it was a campaign of Benetton um, using um, uh, images uh, of um, Olivero Toscani, uh, who, are, who uh, was uh, uh, the, 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 the photographer, um, using um, his work, can say his work, um, for Benetton. So it was an advertisement, of course, for the film, but it was also a campaign of prevention. So it was the discourse of Benetton. Uh, it was a huge scandal <laughs> in France, for example, uh, but Toscani was very scandalous. So uh, it was a, a scandal in France. Um, there was a campaign, a very famous campaign uh, called HIV positive, which part of bodies with uh, HIV positive in the arm and uh, at the, in the bottom. So uh, it was very, very violent for some people. ACT UP was very happy at that time in France, for example, because, yeah, well, someone uh, made this huge advertisement in the street. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing because we can't speak about AIDS. So it was a very, very diff complex affair at that time. Um, but yes, I can, yeah. And also another um, artist, she was uh, Therese Frère. Uh, she was a, a woman and she did a, a very famous picture of David Kirby a young man dying in his parents' arms, terrible pictures. And the images, and the image, sorry, was used by Benetton, again, uh, exhibited in the streets to speak about the disease, to speak about the catastrophe, but also to speak about the firm, and also to speak about uh, sweaters, jeans, etc. So it's a, it was a very, and just to finish with, I, I want to say that in France, to apologize in a way, maybe you know that Benetton, the director of the firm at the time, um, uh, gave a lot of money to do, um, to put a huge condom on the obelisk of the Concorde, on Place de la Concorde, uh, the, um, the pink, uh, the pink uh, condom. And uh, it was um, a gift from Benetton to apologize in a way. Uh, well. OK, well, I think thank it's, you so much. Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> It's seven o'clock. Oh, I just say thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very me. much for your question and sorry for that. So uh, it's seven o'clock. I think Tibor is tired. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to thank you very much for this super interesting presentation. Uh, really, thank you so much, Tibor. And I think that Marco, Antonio, Mario, and I hope to keep in touch uh, for our. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. I, 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 didn't speak, I didn't speak English since 
quite a long time, so I'm very sorry no, no. because I, I, I'm quite afraid my English was not very good. No, no, no. So it I'm was... deeply sorry if I was, it was quite difficult to understand me, but... No need to apologize, absolutely. It wasn't, it wasn't at all difficult. Well, exactly. I can't. Can. Can. <laughs> we, we will care. But it was but a pleasure to meet you. And then, Thibault, you have to, on a daily basis, to put up with my French. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but yeah, your French is better than my English. You are ready. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So, thank you again. Thank you again. See you thank soon. You. Bye. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Ciao, ragazzi. Thank you. See you all. Ciao. Ciao. See you.